Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and today I'm going to be showing you how to build this semi-automatic crop farm in Minecraft. The beauty of this design is that it combines functionality with aesthetics. It's not the most efficient farm ever to be made, definitely not, but it works well and it'll look nice in your world. When you walk up to the entrance of the farm, you step on a pressure plate that releases the water from the well onto all of your crops. Then when you step inside, the water shuts off and the well is restored to its regular look. You can then go around, collect all of your seeds, replant and then do it again when it's fully grown. One last thing to mention before we get started here, there's going to be a full materials list of all of the items that you need to complete this build written down in the description below. The rough circle that we're going to be making for this farm has a diameter of 13 blocks. So go ahead and find yourself a big enough area, mark the center with a block, and then we can grab some spruce fence gates and spruce fences. From the center block on each of the four directions, we're going to go out by one, two, three, four five and six blocks and on this sixth block we're going to place in a spruce fence gate with two spruce fences either side of it and we can do that for the other three sides once we've got all four of these in position we can then come down to one of the sides here and we're going to break the two blocks either side of the spruce fences and we're going to place two spruce slabs on the top part of those blocks and we're going to waterlog those slabs Quick tip, it might be wise to make an infinite wood source nearby so you don't need to grab as many buckets. But on top of these slabs, we're gonna place in two dark oak logs with a spruce trap door on top of them. And then either side on the outside of the log that is, so not the one on this side, on the outside of the farm, we're gonna place in two spruce buttons. And of course, repeat that three more times. As for the corners, we're going to place some spruce fences next to the logs here and then going outwards, we're going to place in two more so that they nearly touch in the middle and to make them connect, we just want to place one more here. And you can do that for the other three corners and eventually the fence around your farm will be all done. At this point, you need to decide on which one of these fence gates is going to be the main entrance and the way to activate the farm. So just pick one of them and come to the block in front of the fence gate here and we're going to dig down one, two and three blocks. Then we're going to go forward by one, two and three more. And then we're going to go forward by another four. So one, two, three and four. And then those last four blocks that we've just dug out, we want to expand that either side by three blocks. So one, two, three, just like that for all four of those blocks that we've just dug out. So don't go back any further than that. So that's one side. And then we can do the same over here real quick. And we should end up with a four by seven wide area here. So that's four blocks there on both of those sides and seven along the longer side. Then at the far end here, we can get rid of these six blocks and then we can also get rid of these nine blocks in the ceiling and you should find in the center of that three by three hole we've just dug should be the center of the farm that we marked to begin with. Now we can start adding in our redstone and don't worry, it's nothing complicated. I designed this myself, so it kind of had to be simple. I'm not very good at redstone, but here we go. So the first thing we're going to do on this far side, we're going to add in three blocks of stone bricks. Now, whenever I do redstone, I like to place the redstone on a man-made block, not a natural block. Just makes it a little bit neater. That's totally optional, but follow that if you want to. So in front of those three blocks, we can add in three stone bricks in the floor with three redstone repeaters on top of them. Then we can have three more stone bricks in front of those repeaters. And we're also going to crouch and just place one more in the center there. Then we can grab our sticky pistons and we're basically going to make a ring all the way around this center block. Of course, crouching when you place them on the repeaters. Then you can just pop back down the hole here and we're going to grab some more stone bricks or whatever block you're using and from this repeater on both of the sides we're going to make this little curve shape just like that so that's four along the back and one either side. We're going to grab a redstone repeater and place one into the piston just like that on either side so make sure it's going into the piston not into the wall so into the piston and then redstone dust on top of the rest of the blocks just like that. We're going to replace these six blocks for some redstone blocks and we're going to have three repeaters on the front three and three redstone dust on the back three. 
Then we're going to turn around down the corridor here and we're going to place a block at the back. One here in the floor, redstone dust on top of both of those, a full block here and then another one here. We're going to stick a torch on the front face of this block which should push up our pistons. Lastly, you just want to light it up down here so you don't have to worry about mobs or anything like that. You don't need to neatly place sea lanterns like I've done, a simple torch would do the job. Now you can just dig your way out of the hole here and replace the blocks as you go and we can also put our grass block back where it was with our pressure plate on top and then just to make sure everything is working when you step on the pressure plate the piston should go down and when you step off they should come back up. With the redstone all done, we can now go ahead and build the actual well containing all of the water. So on the corner pistons here, we're going to place in some full blocks and then we're going to place in some stairs facing outwards on the other four center blocks. On top of the full blocks, we can have some wall blocks and with some fences on top of those. On top of the fences, we can place in some spruce slabs just like that. And then in between all of the slabs, if this bee stays out the way, we can place in some spruce stairs just like that. We're going to place a quick temporary block here with a spruce trap door just slightly above the stairs. And then we're also going to have one, two, three and four spruce trap doors just like that. All we have left to do now is place in the center water source. So to do that, we're going to place a temporary block here, water bucket on top break the temporary block and then we're going to place in one, two, three, four and five chains like that just because it looks pretty cool as far as the well design is concerned. And all we have left to do now is till the soil that is in the confines of this fence and plant your seed on top. Now we can give it a test. So we walk up, step on the pressure plate, not for long at all. Then we can walk inside, wait for the water to disperse and go around the edge and collect all of our drops. And as you can see, it totals one stack and 16 wheat and then plenty of seeds to replant with. So there we go, everybody. That is how you build my semi-automatic crop farm in Minecraft. I really hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you ever so much for doing that. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.